Hello everybody. For our next project, we will be creating a watercolor painting. So to start, I'm going to get a piece of my 9 by 6 inch watercolor paper. And to do the underdrawing, I'll be using my 4H pencil. Handy to have an eraser nearby to do any cleaning up, as well as a reference image to work from. Now there's a series of images you can find in a slideshow that should be in your Google Classroom. You're free to print out the image like I have here, or you can work directly from your computer screen if that's comfortable for you. I'm going to start by doing a contour line drawing of my vase of flowers. I'm not focused on any shading for this drawing. I'm focused on getting the basic shapes and lines of my vase and my flowers drawn in. These are going to be very light lines because eventually we'll be painting over and around them. So I don't want to make them too dark. That's why I'm using my 4H pencil for this. So I'm going to begin lightly sketching in where my flowers go, following the contours and the lines of my reference image, constantly looking from my image to my paper, from my image to my paper, so I can create an accurate drawing to work from for my painting. Now that my drawing is finished, I'm going to come in with my eraser, clean up any edges I need to, and make sure my lines are clearly visible so I can see them more easily as I begin to paint. The next step will be to apply a grid across my flowers. Using a ruler, I'm going to create marks that are two inches apart from one another to create two vertical lines to begin my grid on my paper. Turning my paper now horizontally, I'm going to place marks this time three inches apart to create a grid that consists of two by three inch rectangles on top of my drawing of my flowers. There we have it. So now that my grid is finished, I'll need to reach for my dry watercolor technique testing sheet that we created together on day one of the project. In the various squares of the grid on top of my drawing, I'll be using different colors and various watercolor techniques to create an interesting mosaic effect on my watercolor painting. So for example, in this top left-hand corner box, I'm painting the background of my painting red, and I'll be using the salt technique to create an interesting texture. Now I'll be painting in yellow flowers, as well as green leaves in this top left-hand section. As I move throughout the painting, I'll change up the techniques I'm using, as well as the colors I'm working with, to create a very cool, almost stained glass effect in my finished painting. So you'll see here I'm using the wet on wet technique, this time orange flowers on a red background. Throughout this painting you should be creative, using different colors, different techniques, to create the most interesting finished product that you can.
Once my painting is dry, I can begin to add the final touches using an ultra fine tip Sharpie marker. The Sharpie will allow me to create some detail work, such as outlining individual petals and separating the flowers from the background. I can add little detail work inside the leaves. This black marker will also help to bring together the separate elements from this painting into one finished composition. You can see here as I begin to add more lines, I'm bringing together the flowers, helping them stand out a little bit more from the background. This is a great project to experiment, be creative, work on our drawing as well as our painting skills and learn some new techniques that can really create a wonderfully interesting work of art. As you add your final details, give everything a once over. And if you're happy and satisfied with your results, then you're likely finished. Your turn. Good luck.